Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our very first ever Team Caraway devotional, weekly devotional called Finding the Fast Line. The reason we're going to do these devotions is hopefully to help you in your spiritual journey as you serve the Lord. We know many of you travel a lot. Many of you are away from your hometowns uh, on a weekly basis. So the purpose of this is not to replace the church. Anytime you're home, you need to be in your church. But the purpose of this is to help fill those gaps in when you can't be there. So we're going to try to do these every week. As race season comes, we'll see how that goes. Sometimes it may get hectic. But even at least through the off season, we're going to do this. And our goal is to do this every week throughout the year and to hopefully be an encouragement to you. And again, just to help you in your spiritual training as you uh, go about the country racing and then also as you try to grow your life spiritually. Finding the Fast Line is the name. And the reason we named it that, for those of you that are racers, you understand this. Trying to find that fast line, you're always digging, you're always looking, you're always trying to find something just a little bit faster. Sometimes it's hard to find, sometimes you know right where it is, sometimes it's different between corners, sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low, but there's always something. And even no matter whether you're dirt racing or drag racing or any kind of racing, you're always looking for something. You can change tire pressure, you can change all kinds of things, but you're always constantly looking, trying to get better. And the neat thing about that is, is when you find it, it's so rewarding. You know, it's the same thing spiritually. Whenever you really search and seek, and, and you do, you have to find it. You have to look for it. Uh, if spiritual things were easy, everybody would be spiritually sound. Everybody would be spiritually fit. But it's just like working out. You got to dig for it. You got you to gotta dig down sometimes and really dig deep and look for it and, and spiritually exercise just like you do physically. And when you do that, it's just like racing, and you it's so rewarding when you get that win, when you have that victory, uh, spiritually speaking, when you have those victories, when you find that line, and we all know that the line is Jesus Christ, and sometimes we got to find where he's at. He tells us, but you got to pray about it. you got to seek him. You seek him in his word, and he tells us where he, where he is, but you find where he's at. You find that quick line to him, and when you do that, when you get to where Jesus is, man, that's where the victories are. That's some things worth shouting about. So that's what this is about. That's why we named it that, because ultimately we want to help you in your spiritual journey to find where Jesus is. Uh, it's going to be different for everybody. There's some things that you're going to have to specifically pray for and ask where Jesus wants you to be, but there's a whole lot of things that are already laid out in the Word of God and some things that we've learned through experience in, in our 18 years of ministry that hopefully we can help you with. So that's what this is about. That's how it was birthed as, as we work with Racers for Christ, as we go about uh, ministering with, with y'all and to y'all at the tracks. This is just something to hopefully invest in you a little bit deeper and to disciple you and to help you grow. And hopefully at the end of your spiritual journey, it will have benefited you and been a blessing to you. So that's what this is about. And this week, for our very first time, this is, a, as Cheryl said, this is our first time, so you're going to see, for those of you who are watching, you're going to see that we're not professionals, not even close, and maybe there's somebody here watching that I went to school with, and you remember that little <laughs> quiet, shy kid who was back in the corner and never talked to anybody? Yeah, that's me. Uh, I'm still that way, but God has asked us to step out and to do something, to get out of my comfort zone. Cheryl's been in theater, so she's a little more comfortable with doing things like this. I am not. Uh, but you will see that we're not professionals. Right now, we don't have a lot of high-tech equipment. We're recording on our phone. So it's one take. You're going to say, well, that's not totally true. We've messed up like two or three times already. <laughs> but this take, uh, we're going with it. Uh, bloopers and all. So uh, going forward, uh, we, we hope that it's, that it's good, at least halfway entertaining. We hope that we can hold your attention for a couple minutes because we've got some really awesome truths from the Word of God that we want to share with you. So Cheryl's going to introduce our topic this week. That's right. So as we were researching and praying about what to speak on, um, we just were wondering, okay, what really do we need? What do we need to speak on? What does God have for us? What does God have for you? And so I was doing some research, and the biggest thing that Christians struggle with, new believers, non-believers, um, anybody, is the idea of the love of God. The love of God, they yeah. struggle with that. And I'm like, why do the why do we struggle with the love of God? I mean, really, why do we struggle with it? But I, I for one, even as, you know, being a Christian most of my life, I've struggled with it. Even in recent times when things aren't going my way, I feel like God's not there. Is he really loving me? And so I had to really examine that. Why do we struggle with the love of God? 
And it makes sense that we would struggle with it because if we don't experience the love of God, we can experience all of what God has for us. So that's a good, I thought that was a good subject to talk on today is the love of God. And um, the greatest love of God, of course, that he has given us is Jesus Christ. Right. And the sacrifice he made on the cross for us. In fact, John three sixteen says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's all about the love of God. God didn't have to do that. Because of his love, he defended that on the cross so that we could have eternal relationship with him. And that's why we are able to um, love is because of God's love for us. That's right. And one of the reasons that I believe that we struggle is because sometimes we try to base relationships or, or we base our relationship with God based upon our relationship with human beings. Mm -hmm. And when we think about our relationship with human beings, they're broken. Uh, we're broken people. We're messed up. We're selfish. Uh, we're we're self-seeking. We, we do things we shouldn't do. We're sinful. And oftentimes... Because of that, there's many relationships, probably in your life, I know there are in mine, there's relationships of hurt, whether it's from family, whether it's from friends, whether it's from somebody you thought that was just really, and, and I'll be quite honest with you, we've been in ministry for several years, and there's been some, some relationships in ministry where I thought these were my brothers and sisters in Christ, and I just thought, man, they got my back, and we're just best, best of friends, and the next thing you know, uh, my head's on the chopping block, and it's just, it hurts, and Sometimes we try to think about those things that have happened to us like that, and we think that God acts that way. Uh, God is not a sinful creature like we are. God is a loving Heavenly Father, and His love is different. His relationship is different. His relationship, we base our relationship on merit. If uh, Cheryl does what I want her to do, <laughs> then we're, we're, we have a great relationship, right? No, I'm just kidding about that. But if... Uh, <laughs> How's that working but, out but for we you? Did, yeah, real well. <laughs> but if we do those things, you know, if I expect her to do things and, and then I'm going to show my love because of what, because she did what was pleasing to me, that's a human relationship. Now, God's love is different than that. His love we find in Romans 5, 8. And listen to this. This is amazing. It says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners... Christ died for us. Now, sometimes we might withhold our love from one another. Now, we still love one another no matter what. But sometimes if we don't do exactly what the other person wants us to do, sometimes we kind of withhold our love a little bit, maybe get selfish with it. But God says that even while we were still sinners, while we were so far away from him, while we were actually his enemy, the Bible says that God loved us. It said it demonstrates that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God sent his one and only son to die for us while we were sinners. He didn't do that for when we acted right. He didn't do that for when, when Darren had a, a stellar year and just really studied his Bible all the time and really prayed and really didn't do anything wrong, didn't uh, get involved in things that, that I shouldn't have. But he, he did it when I was at my worst. He did it when I was at my worst, and he sent his son in Jesus Christ to die for us. And I think that's why a lot of people struggle with the, the, with the thought of the love of God, how they can even be loved by Him. And um, we're so human and we think humanly, but God doesn't. He's, he's extraordinary. He's not human. He's, he's God. He's our creator. And He knew we would fail, and that's why He prepared Christ for us. Absolutely. And it's just a couple of reasons that we talked about already that struggling with the love of God is because... We compare it to that human relationship. Mm -hmm. And another reason is it's just hard to comprehend. It's just amazing that someone could love us while we were their enemy. But you know, think about that. Loving your enemy, how hard is that to do? But yet Christ loved us so much that he came, laid his life down willingly. They didn't kill him on the cross. He laid his life down willingly so that you and I might have salvation, so that you and I might be redeemed, and so that our relationship may be made right. When we sin, we are separated from God, and God loved us so much, he wants that relationship. And the only way to do that was through a perfect sacrifice, and that perfect sacrifice was his son, Jesus Christ. And we see that, as I briefly mentioned on that Romans 5, 8, that it says God demonstrates his love, uh, his own love for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That blows me away. I don't know about you, but Cheryl and I have talked about this and just the, 
the magnitude of God's love, how mm-hmm. how could he do that? I mean, how I know me, I know what I've been, I know where I've done, and I'm gonna share just a brief bit about my testimony. Uh, some of you that are watching this, you may, if you've made it this far, <laughs> sadly, uh, I got, not sad that I got saved, but I got saved at the age of 11. That's the greatest thing that ever happened to me. I put my faith and trust in Christ. But then sadly, I got away from the Lord in my teenage years and all the way up till I was 30 years old, man, I was drinking, I was partying, I was doing all kinds of crazy things. And unfortunately, there's some people that actually might see this and turn it off because they say, I can't watch that because I know Darren. I know what a filthy, rotten person he was. I know, uh, and, and thank God those of you that know me today, you know, if you knew who I was and who I am, you'd see the miraculous work of God. But here's what's cool about that, is that while I was in that depth, while I was just way down and out and doing things that, that I, I'm not proud of, I'm ashamed of, some of uh, you that may be watching, I'm, I'm sorry that I led you down some of those paths, but when I was in that depth of my brokenness and my sinfulness, God was still loving me and God was still pursuing me. I'll be quite honest, if I was God and I was looking at me, I probably would have said he's, a, he's worthless. He's not worth anything. Just throw him away. But God in his infinite love said, I still love Darren and he pursued me. And I want to tell you this. The way he pursued me may not be something like what you would think, but I was praying for years to, to quit drinking and to get out of the lifestyle that I had ingrained myself in and that I wasn't proud of. And I prayed for several years. And back in, I guess it was December of 98, uh, a buddy of mine, uh, we used to go flying all the time. We flew all over the country in this airplane. And back in December of 98, that plane went down and it took his dad, his brother, and his nephew's life. And it was so heartbreaking and so devastating for that family, so devastating for, for all of us as we, we mourn the loss of, of my friend's family. It was, just, it was just hard. But God used that incident to they used that tragedy to change my life forever. And God was, how can I say this? He still loved me. And the fact that I'm sitting here today and talking to you on this about this devotion about love is proof of God's love. Because I was so far out there, I was so far gone, but God said, I love you so much, Darren. And when that incident happened, when that plane crash happened, it was as if God doesn't speak in an audible voice to us, but you know what I'm talking about. God speaks to you. And he he spoke to me and spoke to my heart and said, if that had been you in that plane and you were standing in front of me, what would you say? And man, all I could do is just, I couldn't say anything. I could just, I just had to bow my head in shame. But because of God's love, he forgave that lifestyle. He forgave who I was. And he loved me so much that he changed me. He, he put a new heart in me. Am I perfect? No. If you're around me long enough, you can ask Cheryl, I'm, I'm not a perfect person. I, I blow it. And uh, now my kids think I am, so don't, don't spoil it for them. Uh, but but I'm, I'm far from perfect. But in all of that, in all of that messed up life that I had created, God still loved me and said, Darren, I want you. And he proved his love that he sent his son Jesus to die, not only for me, but for the whole world. But he proved it even a greater step than that, that he took somebody that was as broken as I was, and now has put me into helping people and ministering in their lives. So that is just absolutely amazing. Uh, I can't comprehend it. And I think that's what's so hard for us is that how can you comprehend that kind of love? I mean, and you, just... you can't comprehend that kind of love, but in God's word, he kind of explains it a little bit. In fact, in Psalms 85, 15, um, us being filthy sinners that we are and us being ignorant to to good and right and always wanting to go against the against the grain of God's wonderfulness, he's still patient with yeah. us. And in all that, he was patient with you and he yeah. knew that he gave you that desire to love and want to be like him, but it took something brutal for you to to get into the fast line 
But God said in Psalms 86, 15, and I love this verse, but you, Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God. Yes. Slow to anger and rich in faithful love and truth. That tells you a lot right there. Mm. And that was, that's in Psalms and um, the writers of Psalms um, um, were not good, faithful, perfect men. But they were loved of God, and um, David it was an adulterer, and he was a murderer. And um, but in that, in his time during during writing this, he said, "But you, Lord, are perfect, compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, and rich in faithful love and truth." A lot of times, when we as parents, when our children are acting up. Anger is the first thing we have, but um, God, God's not. That's not sure. his first reaction. He's slow to anger. It means he doesn't use his anger. He is compassionate. He created you. He knows who you are and what you have inside of you, and he sees the best in you and wants that out of you. So he's his faithful love and truth, the truth that um, he put through Jesus Christ in you. Um, he's compassionate in that and he gets you to where he needs you to be so that you can see his love for you. That's right. In Psalm 136, 26, we've got a couple of verses we share before we wrap this up, but uh, Psalm 136, 26 says, give thanks to the God of heaven. And we should when we think about Thanksgiving. We should be giving thanks and praising God for all the, the blessings that he's done for us. And, uh, but here's the, the next piece of that verse that's just so powerful. It says, his love is eternal. And that is, as we, as we already mentioned many times, and it's just, it's kind of like talking, when you use that word eternal, when you think about eternity, man, that just, our little finite brains cannot grasp the infinite concept of, of eternality. And it's just, when we think about how can God's love be eternal? How can it be from forever past to for forever in the future? My little brain pops thinking about that. That doesn't take much, but but it does. Uh <laughs> But how can it be? And when you think about that, that right there is worthy of giving thanks. If God did nothing else for us, if he never healed my health, if he never did anything else for me, his love for me is something that I should be thankful because he didn't give up on me. Well, I'll tell you what, a lot of people give up on you. A lot of, uh, a lot of people, especially if you've been down some, some rotten paths, a lot of people give up on you, write you off, say he's worthless, there's nothing that can be done for him. A lot of people will say, I'm done with him, but here's God. He says, he's not only the God of second chances, he's the God of third chances, fourth chances, 156 chances, How, however many it takes, whatever it takes to get you in that fast line, whatever it takes to get you where you need to be, where your relationship is right there with Jesus Christ. That's the kind of love that he has for us. And the last verse we want to leave you with is the most, not the most important, but very important verse. And if you're having troubles struggling and grasping with the fact of that you can be loved just know that you are yes. you're loved by God you're loved by others um in the church and we pray that you will to be able to experience true love and to be able to understand true love you have to be saved you have mm -hmm. to ask Christ to be your savior and God will show you that love in Ephesians 2 4 and 5 it says but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love that he had for us, made us alive with the Messiah, even though we were dead in trespasses, you are saved by grace. Yeah. It's not about being perfect. It's not about doing anything. You're still a sinner, but you can be saved by yes. grace. And that grace was shown in the gift of God's only son, Jesus Christ. That perfect gift, that perfect sacrifice, that is God's grace to you and I. While I was messed up, and while I was in my sin, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for that. And wherever you are, you may look at us and you may be watching this and say, but you don't know where I've been. I don't, but God does. And God says, I've already been there. I've already been there. And while I was there, I sent my son to take care of it. It's all about his infinite love and his infinite grace. And you can have that relationship restored with God through Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. People think that church is about all these rules and regulations and God's this God that doesn't allow you to have any fun. I want to tell you something. We have fun in our life. We enjoy it. 
we have some times that are discouraging sometimes, but man, we love life. We get to enjoy it. And the reason we do is because we have a relationship with God. We don't have to have the drugs. We don't have to have the alcohol. We don't have to have those things. God gives us joy in our heart. But the reason that God sent his son is for the forgiveness of sins. He loved us so much. He wants to have you in heaven. He wants to have Cheryl in heaven. He wants to have me in heaven. He wants to have everybody in this world in heaven. And the only way to get there is by accepting that gift. He showed his grace and he showed his mercy. He could have done a lot of things to me. He could have done a lot of things to you. And he showed his grace and mercy and he showed those and he demonstrated that by sending Jesus Christ his son. And the Bible says it's a gift. And we all know as we're thinking about Christmas time, there's a bunch of gifts about to change hands. I can't. But it's, Black Friday's coming. It's coming. So <laughs> hope your wallets are ready uh, and hope your stress levels are ready. But uh, what we know about a gift is you've got to take it. If someone offers you a gift, if you don't take it, it's not your gift. But if someone offers it to you and you take it, it now becomes your gift. And that's what God did. Because of his grace, his love, and his mercy. We can't understand it. And I'll be honest with you, I cannot understand it. I can't understand that kind of love. But one thing I know is through the truth of scriptures is that he loves you, he loves me, and he loves Cheryl, and he loves everybody. Even on the days that we're unlovable, and we are. And hopefully you all will never see that, but <laughs> I'm going to be honest, I'm a human being. Uh, and Cheryl is too. We try our best to, to walk the right line, to walk the the fast line to, to making that, that line the, the place that we need to be. But we do mess up. But even still, God says, Darren, I love you. 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 Well, what about the hundred thousandth mistake? I still love you. And that's the love and mercy of God. So, Anything else? I don't. I think we should pray. I pray for, um, pray for those that are out there watching that if, yeah. if this is something that they need, um, if this isn't something they understand just in our little devotion, please contact us. We, we're here for you. We'd love to explain more and walk you through um, what we're talking about. That's right. Don't forget this. Whether you understand it or not, God loves you. He That's really right. does. And so do we. That's why we're doing this. That's, right. That's why we do what we do. We love God. And because we love God, it makes us love people. And yes, sometimes people are unlovable. We've crossed. We've had cross paths with some, but we still love them because of the love that God showed That's us. Right. Even in our most unlovable state, God loved us. So we try our best to love people whether they're lovable or not. So, But we know that you are, and we're looking forward to spending some, some time with you as we go through these series and then at the track. So God bless y'all, and we're going to pray. Father, we thank you again for this day. Thank you for all you do for us. Father, we just pray that this video would touch somebody and help somebody. And Father, we can't understand your love, but God, it's true in the scriptures it's so profound it's so life-changing it's done so many things so many broken people experience the love of christ and because of that their life has changed forever i for one am one of those people and father i know my wife is father i know a lot of people in our church i know a lot of people uh, in the paths that we've crossed whose life is so totally different because of the love that they experienced when they experienced your love of salvation through Jesus Christ. Father, bless this ministry you've given us. Bless these devotions. Touch lives with them as only you can do. Father, take these words that we're speaking and put power in them. Lord, our words are not powerful, but you are. Father, change lives. Save lives. Expand the kingdom of heaven because of this work you've called us to. And we'll give you the praise in everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless y'all. We'll see you. you down the road. We love you.